uh, just your story. Where did you grow up uh, from there to how did brass tags happen? Just, yeah. Um, I grew up in Chennai. Okay. I lived here, um, studied here until my 10th grade. Okay. I went to a boarding school near Pune for my 11th and 12th. Okay. And um, I took a year off between 12th and college. Okay. And it was a time for me to just travel, explore the country. I worked with a few different nonprofits. I did a lot of theater, a lot of volunteer work. Okay. And, um, and then I went to the States to study economics. I did my undergrad there. Okay. And after that, I worked at an economic analysis firm in New York. Um, I did that for two years, and during that entire time, I was thinking about um, brass tacks and starting this clothing line. And so um, one day, I just decided that I need to do it now, and I was really, I was really impatient. I think that's been my yeah. uh, shortcoming, but also something that drives me. Okay. And I had the support of my parents, who were like, you know, if you wanted to do this, then uh, it's going to be a lot of hard work, but we're here to support you. So I moved back to Chennai in 2006 and started Brass Tax in early 2007. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, so how, what about the story of uh, Brass Tax? I read online that your mother uh, has a textile uh, company or sorts, is it? I'm not sure about the details. So is, is it just from her or so what's the story of that? Uh, so my mom and her partner started a sari retail business when I was born, or actually when she was pregnant with me. Okay. I don't know how people can, uh, yeah, have a family and start a business at the same time, but I'm okay. the youngest of three, okay. and she decided that, you know, raising three children wasn't challenging enough, so she started a business with her partner. Okay. And, uh, and growing up, I was never told to learn anything about her business. I was never even taught, you know, this is cotton, this is silk, and this is kalamkari, and this is ikat. But my mom did bring a lot of her work home, or sometimes if I finished school early, then I would go to her office, and I'd be doing homework over there until she was ready to go home. So I think I was just surrounded by those textiles, and her aesthetic taste and sense has really influenced mine. Right. Uh, and then I never really thought about it until I went to... Um, college and then worked in New York and when I was working in New York it was the first time when I was living in the States and earning money and ready to do a little bit of shopping and I would go around to different stores and I found that I really gravitated towards strong silhouettes with uh, sharp tailoring, clothes that were really well cut and every time I would see a dress or a jacket or a top I would think to myself oh this is such a cool design or this is really a cool draped idea but wouldn't it look great in this ikat fabric or this ajrak fabric or a natural textile that I know about from home? And so, and that's when I started to, it started really out of personal longing. I longed to see clothes that were made out of Indian textiles, but not the straight cut, really simplistic stuff that you often see in the market. I wanted to see them styled well. I wanted to see a fashion forward version of these uh, traditional textile crafts. And I thought to myself, well, I've, I've lived outside Chennai for six years now. This was when I was living in New York. And I thought to myself, somebody must have thought of this already because there are tons of students that go to design school. And so I came to Chennai for one of my vacations and I scouted around and I thought to myself, there must be somebody who's doing this already. And I found there were two ends of a spectrum. There, was, uh, there were brands like Fabindia that provide really good value for money. Uh, but unnecessarily uh, fashion forward um, and then you have the high-end labels which are fashionable in a way but not necessarily really well cut and they're not really affordable either and uh, there's this huge void in between and I wanted to create a brand that was um, just really well cut well tailored clothes I'm not trying to create clothes that are going to be the next edgy thing in you know fashion trends I'm not trying to create something that's a, a red carpet dress um, it's just really well made well tailored with a focus on good quality with a focus good quality fabrics and strong silhouettes every garment that we make has to be shapely yes. okay. okay so that's really what brass tax is about okay. and, um, and yeah my aesthetic influence has been my mother's 
uh, taste in saris and handloom textiles, but uh, but she no longer works, and our companies are completely different. Okay. Okay. Right. So, uh, so I think brass tax is not just in Chennai now, right? Uh, are you an artist uh, as well, or how does that Well, happen? my own store is in Chennai, and I retail through other stores in um, Bombay and Bangalore, okay. and we also have an online store. All right. Okay. 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 All right. So, what about your uh, inspiration for for just what makes you wake up every day and do this, right? Uh, why do you just run to your workshop and say, "Oh, well, this is what I want to do today." Um, I think part of it is that impatience to get an idea out. Uh, part of it is because it's my own business. I don't I don't know if I would be this way if I was working for somebody else. I think when it's your own business, it's your own baby and you're so emotionally tied to it and you're always striving for perfection even if it's even if you're not there, it's just work in progress, right? You always wanna do something better. You always wanna see if you can create a system that's I don't know, human proof, fool proof. Within, in terms of administration, within the way the company works, you always want to create designs that people love and that you also love creating. And uh, in the world of textiles, there's just so much going on in India. I've participated in a textile and um, garment exhibition in Coimbatore a couple of weeks ago. And it was such a cool experience because I got to meet all these other designers from all over the country and they're all doing such interesting work. And last week we had the World Craft Council uh, yeah. have their Golden Jubilee Curtain Razor Summit in Chennai and there was so much stuff going on. And again, it was like, you know, stimulation and a lot of inspiring ideas. And I mean, you have all of that around you. I think it's really easy to find inspiration and the energy and motivation to wake up every day and run to your workshop and create because okay. it's, yeah. it's there all around you. People are doing it. People are doing it under really harsh conditions. And so yes. I think for an urban designer with access to simple infrastructure that we take for granted, like an air-conditioned office and good roads and internet, um, it's actually a lot easier. True. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's great. Um, what, what, what about your, uh, your typical day? How, how is it? So do you go to your shop, workshop? How, how do you split your time between? I usually spend the first couple of hours working from home because I find that um, I'm a morning person and when I wake up in the morning, my mind is clear and it's just easier to work on stuff where where I need to work on it alone. And I often find that when I go to the workshop, even though I have an office space, it's really hard to get uninterrupted time. And that's something I really need for creative work. So I usually do most of my creative work and my design planning in the morning and I don't try not to answer too many emails or take too many phone calls. And then I go to the workshop and I spend a few hours there. Some of it is, a lot of it is actually troubleshooting. Anybody who runs a business will tell you that a lot of the time is just spent solving problems and training people, guiding people. So I spend a lot of time doing that. I spend a lot of time with my production manager talking about it's production nice. schedule, what's the status of you know different styles, when are they going to get done. Um, I spend some time with my pattern maker reviewing the next set of styles that we're working on together. I might try on a few samples, give them feedback. Okay. Um, and then I come back uh, to the city in the afternoon. And depending on the day, depending on how late I come back, whether it's afternoon or night, I might either go to the store for 10 minutes or I might go there and spend a couple of hours there. Uh, so that's my schedule from Monday to Friday. And Saturday I spend all day at the store, you know, except for a lunch break. Okay. Because um, that's when most of our customers stop by, and I think it's really important for me to get that first-hand feedback from them. Mm -hmm. And it's also important for me to get FaceTime with customers for them to know what the brand is about and the work that we're doing, for them to hear from a designer's perspective what each style is supposed to yeah. fit like and what the dress is supposed to drape like. And So, yeah, that's, that's what I do. And then Sundays I used to spend a lot of time doing creative work, but... Uh, this year, I decided that I should take Sundays off. Okay. So okay. I don't work on Sundays anymore. Okay. okay. Uh, so I see that you talk a lot about your team. Even on Facebook, I've seen I've seen a lot of uh, I've seen you giving importance to them. You know, 
bringing them under the spotlight and stuff, which I feel yeah. is very, very nice because, I mean, they are part of the system as well and they are helping you bring everything together and, and put it out there on the shelves. So how, how do you, what do you think about that? As in, yeah. They're a really crucial part of the organization. Uh, you know, earlier when I was saying that anybody in business will tell you that they spend a lot of time troubleshooting, I think uh, any business where so much of your work depends on people and people skills, you spend a lot of time in management and hiring people, training people, figuring out ways to retain people. And sometimes I think to myself, wow, I've had people who joined Brass Tax five years ago and they've been with me since. And they're really crucial key people. They're people whom I can depend on. They're people who I can call up in the morning and say, you know, I, you know, I have an emergency. I'm not coming to work today. Can you just run the show? And I know that it's in good hands and they're going to take care of things. And I'm so grateful for that. And, and it really is true what I say on Facebook, that they're the ones who make it happen. Yeah. I can sit and draw a sketch and order fabric, but who's going to make it all come yeah. together? Yes. So, so the Facebook thing is really a, a celebration of the, the cool team that I have. They, yeah, yeah. they understand my short temper, my impatience. Mm -hmm. They understand yeah. my high standards and yeah. how finicky I am about the little details. And um, they understand that that's, that's what makes the brand special. And I think to have a team like that, even if it's small, to have a team like that is really precious. And, and they're fun people too. Uh, as you can probably see from some of the photos and the videos. So yeah. I thought it would be nice for customers, for, you know, brass tax customers to see who's really creating the clothes that they're wearing. Yep, yep. I thought it was really cool, you know. When I, I, I saw the video from the, the Night Stars Maxis where, where everybody was, was, like, doing stuff. And I was like, this is really cool, you know. I can see see the thing happening there. So, yeah. 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 It was nice. Um... So, what what are some of your biggest learnings so far, Annika? You've been at this what five more than five years now, right? Um, five years and four months, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, what have, what are some of the things that have stood out, like from before you started this uh, brass tax and from until I mean up until now? <laughs> um, some of the things that I've learned. Yeah, yeah. So or, just. Yeah, just it might just be that people are important. It might just be like uh, working in the night is not good. I don't know. <laughs> just just things like that. Um, there's so many things, really. I think when I started a business, people always told me it's going to be hard work. But hard work is, um, is actually a really abstract word when you think about it, uh, at least for me, after running a business for so long. Hard work to me always meant there's going to be a lot of time that you need to put into the business, uh, which I never had a problem with. But I think the difficult thing is the kind of work that you have to do. And I think that the really hard part is that the kind of problems that you face when you run a business are sort of relentless. You know, it's like today it could be a tailor issue, tomorrow it could be a sales staff issue, a third day it could be, uh, you know, your rent just got jacked up or... It, it's something or the other and it's kind of it's it's non-stop and I think it's really really hard to cope with that so I always try to stick to a few things that um, that make me happy and give me a little bit of a breather from all of that because okay. to find the energy and motivation to go to work every day with a positive attitude despite all of the million things that need to be attended yeah. to all the million um, yeah. curveballs get, that get thrown your way um, to be able to deal with that, I think you need to find a few things that make you happy, a few things that are kind of like time out from your work, whether it's sleeping well or maybe watching a movie on a on one weeknight every week or uh, making time for friends. I think that's a mistake I made from the, from the first couple of years. I always kept on saying, I'm too busy, I've got no time for this, got no time for that. But it's so important, I think, because when you run a business, you're working so much in isolation. The people who work with you are not really your colleagues because they're also working for you mm -hmm. and you miss out on that interaction yep. with your peers and having a network if you're only going to be working all the time. So I make sure that I find time to exercise and to sleep well and to mm -hmm. catch up with people and 
have fun despite um, difficult times at work or even actually especially when you're having a hard time at work it's so much more important to do that so that you get some perspective and you don't start feeling cynical about everything yeah okay 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 uh, yeah i've come to my final question which is um, if there is one advice or a couple of things that that you want to tell to the viewers who are seeing this uh, from your experience what what would that one thing or a couple of things be um I think uh, one, just one. <laughs> I don't know. I think um, may maybe that. What I just said, you know, finding the time to um, to do a few things that you really enjoy, so that you don't start feeling cynical. Because it's so important when you run a business to constantly keep standards high, to constantly uh, you know push for improvement, to constantly motivate your staff. And it can be really hard, actually, when you're having a tough time at work, when you're going through a rough patch, you've got bills to pay, um, you've got expense receipts coming in, and uh, you still have to go to work every day and smile and motivate everybody else. Yeah. They can let you know that they're down, but you can't let them know that you're down. Yeah. And um, in order to be able to do that, then you need to be able to have some fun. Mm -hmm. And, um, of course, you choose to do what you love doing and people are naturally good at what they love doing but I think it's naive to say that just because I love designing means that every single minute of my day is fantastic actually no I don't spend you know I spend less than 20% of my time designing and most of the time goes in management operations figuring out how to scale the business marketing and everything else so my one piece of advice is to keep standards really high and to constantly strive to motivate other people but in order to find energy to do that you also be able to stick to a few things outside of work maybe yeah. it can even be like like i said earlier exercise and good sleep yeah. that um, helps you find that positive energy every day okay. yeah thank, thank you so much it was really nice talking to you uh, you're uh, welcome yeah. thank you <laughs> pleasure yeah